Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is He's Redeeming Love. And this is chapter 77 called The Fight with Sarah. Um, I uh, was starting to, over the months of knowing Sarah, I was starting to face opposition when it came to Sarah, that she had uh, built such a tremendous... Uh, foundation of love and acceptance in my life that she had to uh, she had to trust and the love of me to be able to start to stand up to some of the wrong beliefs and thinking patterns that I had in my life uh, she was the kind of person that didn't have to be right about things but simply loved me enough to correct me in my wrong thinking so she started to stand up to me when it came to uh, things um, that I was talking about in my many long conversations with her that she disagreed with and that were lacking foundations in the Bible and, and that uh, seemed to be at odds with what she believed and what she'd experienced of God and uh, I served an angry and judgmental God and uh, didn't understand unconditional love and grace and acceptance and uh, I thought that uh, I was righteous even though I was uh, still uh, addicted to pornography I still considered myself more set apart and holy and righteous, someone that was doing God a lot of favours. Uh, I was very self-righteous of my own actions. I, I was doing all these videos, I was writing all these articles, I was doing all this ministry um, uh, prophetically on a prophetic website. I was a very uh, busy and in-demand preacher. Uh, on the internet and uh, I certainly had my opinions and my beliefs about things and I was very confident that I was right and I was writing about how uh, right I was and I was backing up everything with scripture verses uh, that were uh, not really in context but were backing up everything I said according to what I'd been taught by other people. So um, she was starting to stand up to me and I remember one time we were in a car and uh, I started to uh, say something and she disagreed and I uh, rose my voice and I said no she's wrong and she said no I'm wrong myself and this is the reason why and she went into the reason I argued with her reason and she, she explained another reason I argued with that I started shouting at her saying that she was wrong and uh, that uh, she, she shouldn't dare speak to me she's only 20 years of age she's only 21 years of age by that time um, and uh, she shouldn't be speaking to me like this she should respect me and if she knew more she'd say less that's something I used to say to people if they knew more they'd say less I'd shut their mouth I was essentially telling her to shut her mouth because she's wrong she's wrong this time you're not right this time Sarah you're wrong so just shut up because you're wrong and I was getting very angry and very agitated uh, Sarah um, started to get angry and agitated with me not so much just because of my behavior because she's a very loving and considerate and um, blessed person to know um, I think she was uh, got so upset simply because she couldn't break through to me I was obstinate obstinate I was unteachable and I was proud and I couldn't be told I was wrong and I think um, she tried so hard and that's why the argument got so heated um, that uh, I think she just got so angry with me for being so proud and so uh, unaccepting of the truth that she was trying to present to me and um, she was shouting at me and she finally said Matthew you're the most un-Jesus like person that I've ever met and uh, I uh, considered myself to be very Jesus like 
and I considered myself to be a very loving person and extremely like Jesus in his character traits and uh, that was uh, if you could have slapped me with an insult that was the biggest insult you could have given me and uh, I was totally blown away and I said to her you can't mean that that how could you say that and she says I'm saying it now shut the door and she slammed the door in my face and she drove off and I was uh, totally shocked that she'd said I was the most un-Jesus like person she'd ever met I was pretty amazed at the heat that our conversation had had I was really surprised that she'd slammed the door and well, I'd closed the door and she'd driven off so fast whether she slammed the door or not I can't remember but I, I was amazed at how angry she was. I'd never seen her angry like that, especially had never seen her angry with me. I'd only seen her listening and being patient with me. I'd never seen her angry at me, and I'd never seen her in a heated discussion so um, heated as that conversation was. And as I went home that day, I was sort of in regret because I felt that I'd lost my true friend. I always wanted a Christian girlfriend. I always wanted a girl that uh, I could be close to, that I could love and be my friend. And she was like a daughter to me and a young friend to me. And she was someone so special to me and so dear to my heart. And yet I was filled with fear as I went home on the train to my place that I'd finally crossed the mark with her and I've finally blown the friendship um, and uh, I've just done too much. One thing with people who've been rejected so much in their life is if uh, they're not rejected naturally by people they'll do something to provoke rejection in any person and only a person with tremendous grace and love will be able to keep a person like me in their life because I'll just continue to give grace to that person and give love to that person and put up with all their bad um, personality traits and uh, love them for years until they finally change and the Holy Spirit changes them. So the next day I got into work with trepidation, wondering whether uh, she was going to still be speaking to me. And she was the bright and sunny and happy Sarah. And she said, hi, Matthew, how are you? And she gave me a hug. And um, she didn't mention the day before, but things were... She was acting like nothing had happened. And it was totally unbelievable to me. And I think, um, I think that day I got the first chink in my armour. If you say that... Um, a soldier gets a chink in their armor, they get a sort of a cut or a bruise in their armor. If you keep on hitting that bruise, you could break through with your sword into their armor and kill the person. Well, I had a strong armor around myself and my beliefs in this judgmental, angry God. And um, I was so uh, convinced of my beliefs that um, God was right and we were wrong and Christians were going to go to hell if they didn't get holy and repent. And uh, I was so convinced of it that I'd been preaching it on YouTube, I'd been preaching it in my videos, I'd been preaching it in my articles. I even had an article about six parables that prove Christians go to hell. And uh, I was very convinced of an angry, unforgiving God. And yet, here was Sarah so convinced that God was a God full of agape love, unconditional love, that we, we are loved without cause and that there's no reason why we should be loved, but yet whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us, the verse says in the Bible. And Jesus loved us so much that he died on a cross for us, uh, even whilst we were still sinning, all the sins that we'll ever commit 
uh, in our life have been forgiven 2,000 years ago. Some people will preach that we've got to repent each day and if we haven't repented of certain sins, if we die, we'll go to hell. And yet all our sins were forgiven 2,000 years ago. Every sin I'll ever commit in my life was paid for by Jesus on the cross. And Jesus shouted out at the end of the cross, it is finished. And it was finished. That penalty for sin had been paid. And so whether you repent or you don't repent of the sins that you commit, the fact of the matter is the price for those sins has already been paid. And uh, this was something I didn't understand, I didn't comprehend, and I was so full of my own uh, rightness, I was so full of pride and arrogance, thinking I was right, that it hadn't dawned on me that I could possibly be wrong. It was such a fierce and heated argument the day before that someone had to crack, and uh, I saw that uh, Sarah had cracked... Um, with her anger getting angry at me the first time she'd ever been angry with me in my life and yet the very next day she was sweet as pie and not being contriving or not being manipulating and not uh, having a controlling spirit in her being bad one day and nice as pie the next and you never know where you stand with a person but she was generally, she'd generally forgiven me and wanted to leave the past where it was and wanted to continue our friendship and the love that we shared between us. And that was when I got the first chink that this grace is really true because if the God I served was a God like Sarah, if the God I served could honestly see me so wrong and so bad and so arrogant and prideful and yet forgive me in the very next breath and the very next day and be so loving toward me without dealing out punishment or shame or judgment or condemnation for my behavior or addressing my behavior and saying it was wrong before they forgive me um, i was just totally blown away and shocked and i think uh Sarah demonstrated the grace of God to me and uh, that was the first chink uh, in my armour and uh, the armour was soon to be um, starting to fall down around my knees and I was soon naked before God with uh, nothing to hold on to except uh, his true message of grace and love and unconditional, unmerited favour.